It's like GPS for your life. The Sky Vibe Show. It's 2024. It's four years since the pandemic. Since we all, the world changed. It's the Sky Vibe. Judy Diamond here with professional astrologer Thomas Miller. Thomas, we got to continue the conversation that we had on the last episode because I think this has a lot to do with this whole pandemic and why things aren't normal. Well, we know that right now, I think anybody would say that where we are today is not the way it was in 2019 and beyond and before. Things changed. Things pivoted in the year 2020. And they pivoted in the sky. And boy, I saw this one coming. I had been studying this one for quite a while and it's been on it was on my Fun Astrology podcast quite a bit talking about this in 2019 looking ahead at two planets that aligned together. They were on a straight line. Now, you couldn't see it. You couldn't look up there with a telescope and see it. But Saturn and Pluto, which Pluto is 3.3 billion miles out, and it's smaller than our moon, so it's like no wonder you're not going to see it. But it is very significant in astrology. It's hugely significant in astrology, in fact, And those two were on the same line. They were at the same degree along that ecliptic circle that we talked about back in episode number one, that they were together in the sky on that line in January, January 12th, 2020. It happened in the morning in the time zone that I was in. I was in central time at that point. I was in Dallas. And we got a group of people together out by the DFW airport to watch it. I brought my laptop. We were a little coffee shop. We set it up. It was like, I don't know what's going to happen here, but this is going to change our lives. Yes, I remember the podcast and because I went back to it and went, how did he know this was going to happen? <laughs> by history. The, the answer yeah. to that is very clear. It's by history. So Pluto is the farthest out, so it's the slowest moving. It takes 20 years, basically, to get all the way around the sun. And the meaning of Pluto, like what does it represent? Pluto is all about transformation. Okay, Pluto, gotcha, now, now, because that's important so people well, understand Well, it that. is, and see, Pluto in astrology rules death, and people don't want Ooh. to talk about death. That's a very mm. dark area, mm-hmm. but think about it. If we're going to really change, something has to die, mm. and it has to be reborn. That's it's like the tarot card. The death card is all about rebirth, death and rebirth. See, they go together. So, yes, Pluto rules death, and when you look at death in astrology. You look at the eighth house. That's the piece of pie. That's where it's ruled. And death is part of life. I mean, it's something Mm -hmm. we all have to accept. But in the context of our life transformation, it is about shifting from something that doesn't serve, that needs to die, something we need to get rid of, and it's changing that and morphing it. Think about the caterpillar to the butterfly. It's that kind Mm -hmm. of symbolism. It right. was big. So it started this big thing and you saw it in 2019. So, 2020 starts major shift in the world yeah. as we know it. Now, Saturn, Saturn is known as Lord Karma. <laughs> so it's like I think of Darth Vader, you know, dom, dom, da, dom, dom, da, dom, da, coming da. along right around the corner and that cape and that walk and everything. So and is it's it like, considered a maleficent like the... It's not evil, but... Yeah, malefic is the kind of the astrological term attributed to Saturn. The reason is because when we face our shadows, that brings up, they say karma's a bitch, right? I mean, it's Mm -hmm. like, that's the idea of Saturn. But here's how I look at Saturn. I have a different perspective on it. Saturn to me is only dark like that if you're asleep. Mm. If you are not living a conscious life... Saturn is the area of the sky that is going to be used by the universe to get your attention. Mm -hmm. It's like, we got to wake her up somehow, some way. We've got to get this guy's attention somehow. For me, it was going through two divorces. But Saturn didn't have the sky. God didn't have my attention until it whacked me down enough to where I would stop and listen. Mm -hmm. And then I had to. To me, Saturn's a great teacher. I look at Saturn as the mentor, but the tough teacher. I think of Saturn as a great big daddy. Yeah. Who's come home from work back in the 50s, you know, would say he's reading his newspaper and smoking his pipe. (laughs) 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 You know, gives the kids something. And 
couldn't wait, if you're a little girl, to come running up to daddy and jump up in his lap. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter if he was reading the newspaper or what he was reading. You were in daddy's arms. Mm -hmm. That to me is, and I know that's very idealistic. I love that. I absolutely love it. But that's the picture that I have of Saturn. Now, if you were a bad little girl or a bad little boy, just you wait until your father gets home, right? And then there was going to be a reckoning. That's the other now, side. Now, it's funny. I look at Saturn as Dumbledore. To me, Saturn's like <laughs> yeah. Dumbledore. Like if yeah. you're a Harry Potter fan. Yeah. I mean, just, oh, yeah. just, you know, he's kind of that really gentle, sweet, but can be tough. And you're supposed to learn from this, Harry yep. Potter, yep. Hermione, you know. Um, yeah. Exactly. I, I, and That's... so when you have death and Saturn together, so now as I'm seeing it, Pluto, I won't say death, Pluto and Saturn, now you've got Dumbledore facing off with Voldemort maybe. Pluto, who wants you to die, maybe, but but not in a bad way, because Dumbledore is going, hey, kid, hey, Harry, that's actually something you need to get rid of yeah. to get to whatever it is, to get to your gold. And here's something that we have. When we're talking about astrology, we're talking about it applying to you, Judy, me, Thomas. And the collective. Right, exactly. Right. And those are two very different things. How mm-hmm. you and I apply it is completely different than how the collective applies it. Mm -hmm. Broadly, the collective is consciously brain dead. Mm. So they do have to be woken up. You asked, how did we know that this was going to be so pivotal? And after that point in January of 2020, it wasn't three weeks before the World Health Organization had declared SARS-CoV-19 a worldwide pandemic. Three weeks. Mm Mm-hmm. How did we know? What, yeah, what shifted? You Mm -hmm. go back in history. And basically, if you walk it back, because Pluto, now this all happened. Remember in the first episode we talked about, you've got the the planets. They're kind of like the actors on the stage. Mm -hmm. You've got the signs that they're in. That's the characteristics of the planets. Well, this happened in Capricorn. And we've been talking about this rulership concept in astrology. Saturn, Lord Karma, rules Capricorn. Mm, so that's this, really interesting to me. So this happened in Saturn's home. Mm. So the image that I got as I was looking at this and researching it was, they're like Ackroyd and Belushi. These are the karmic blues brothers. Mm. <laughs> They've got their, yeah, I see what you're saying. They got their sunglasses on and their hats on and the top is down and they're cruising down Hollywood Boulevard, you know, looking for it. Well, if you trace it back, because they move so slowly, the last time that they were together in Capricorn at this same place, there were only two times in the last thousand years. Wow. Yeah. So I walked it back to 1284 A.D., and I looked at what happened in the in the 1300s. So here they were, exactly like they are now, with a lot of the same planets around them as were in this 2020 in January. And the 1300s basically started with a famine. There was a big solar cycle in the early 1300s. And we are going through solar cycle 25 right now. Look it up, Mm nasa.gov. Okay, so there's a solar cycle. That affected things. Then there was an economic collapse because of the famine. Then there was a war in about the 1330s. And then you know what happened in 1347? Mm Mm-mm. The bubonic plague. Wow. The ultimate pandemic. Wow. I did not know that. So when the WHO, see, this is where astrology can really guide you because when the WHO declared the pandemic, I was not surprised in the least bit. I thought my reaction, oh, so we're starting with the pandemic this time. Interesting. But what happened in the 1400s? That was when the whole focus of Europe shifted to a little town called Florence, Italy, and the Italian Renaissance period. Renaissance began. Wow, chills. And historians still today, some have said that there was never a better time to be on this planet than the Italian Renaissance. Wow. Well, I would now say now. So we had to go from the Dark Ages, (laughs) right? Bridged by the 1300s to get to the Italian Renaissance, the best time to be on the planet and look at all the various things that happened. 
Wow. And it was all triggered by Saturn and Pluto coming together in the sky. The same wow. one that happened on January 12th, 2020, exactly as you said, during our lifetime, we now have the best seat in the house for what's coming. Wow. Talk about history repeating itself. <laughs> it's truly amazing when you think about it. Wow. It is. We got to do more on this because this is fascinating to me. Um, and again, we will do more on the collective. And And I do have a question that I want to tap into about um, helping do what some people call the mundane. I hate, I don't really love the word, but I, 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 I will explain it. I think in the next there. episode. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. I really do. I want I think that's really important. So if we Good. can tap into that a little bit more, that'd be great. You got it. Make sure to follow Thomas Miller's other podcasts, including Fun Astrology and Old Soul, New Soul. And you can also find out about getting your own astrology readings. Thank you for listening.